This video is kind of a response to the Harbor Freight do-it-yourself solar generator video by Fission and Stuff. I used his instructions to build my own power station with some upgrades. So if you want the full build instructions, check out his video that I have linked in the comments. My girlfriend bought me these absolutely incredible portable solar panels for Christmas. And since I already had a huge 100 amp hour lead acid battery and a 2000 watt inverter sitting around, I decided to make a power station to keep all the components neatly organized in a single container that we could take off grid camping. The most obvious difference between my build and the one on Fission and Stuff's channel is that I used a slightly more robust and expensive rigid toolbox to house all my components. I love the look of this box and how heavy duty it is. I did have to trim out some interior plastic ribs to mount everything to the walls, but it is still very strong, and even with a 60 pound battery inside, there is no flex when being lugged around. It has this really cool internal storage container that sits on top of the battery that you can use to store your wall charger and spare fuses. Also, unlike a lot of other toolboxes that you can find at Home Depot, the wheels remove quickly so I can easily get it into the back of my truck. It also has a place to install a lock, and it's part of Rigid's Pro Tool System. So if you want to add more toolboxes on top for additional storage, you totally can. On the left side of the box, I did install a 5 volt fan that plugs right into the USB port on the inverter. And on the right side, just above the charge controller, I drilled a one inch air intake hole, then covered it with some stainless steel wire mesh to keep critters out. For the solar charge controller, I went with a top of the line Victron Smart Solar MPPT 100 30 charger. This thing rocks, and I don't think I could ever compromise with a cheap controller after using a Victron. It is incredibly efficient and maximizes every single watt of solar you can get from your panels. Plus, it also has a really great app that connects very quickly to your phone and will show you just how well your system is performing. My 2000 watt inverter is a few years old but still works fine. It is kind of big and was a tight squeeze to get into the box, but with some patience I got it to fit perfectly and it has enough power to run whatever high amperage appliances I want like air compressors, <laughs> angle grinders, and other power tools. Just like Fission and Stuff's build, this inverter runs through a 100 amp circuit breaker, and there's also a separate 125 amp fuse on the battery. I'm not an electrician, <laughs> and I approximated these safety measures, so let me know if you think I can make improvements here. Unfortunately, the inverter doesn't just power on when you turn the master battery cutoff switch. You actually have to open the lid and press a button to power it on but that's a very minor inconvenience in my mind. There is a 12 volt fuse block, and for my 12 volt power output, I chose a single panel that offers a power switch, voltage meter, a few USB 3.0 ports, and a single cigarette lighter port that we can directly plug our 12 volt cooler refrigerator into. From previous tests with this battery, I was able to run the refrigerator for over three days without recharging. For charging ports, I went with XT60 connectors. There's one port for the solar panels that goes to the charge controller, and a separate port for directly charging the battery with a modified Noco Genius wall charger, or even from a 12 volt battery isolator I have mounted in the bed of my truck. I wanted to conduct a not too scientific test to see just how long I could run a fair size load off this power station, and then how quickly I could charge it back up to full capacity using the solar panels. I started by fully charging the system off of the wall charger and then I plugged in a 50 inch TV that we have in the basement that is connected to a Raspberry Pi 3 and an external hard drive. My inverter said the whole load was only pulling 30 to 40 watts, so I went and plugged a lamp into it as well which brought the entire wattage up to somewhere between 50 and 60 watts. Using Ohm's law, I estimated that the battery would last for at least 20 hours at this rate of consumption. To break that down, it's a 100 amp hour battery times 12 volts gives you 1200 watt hours. Divide that by 60 watts of consumption and it's about 20 hours of usage. I ran the load on the power station for 19 hours and the battery was still reading 11.1 volts under load and 11.5 volts without a load. I consider this a successful test and it is more capacity than I will ever need while camping or during an outage. After the power station was depleted, I took it outside and hooked it up to the solar panels which fully charged the battery in an incredible 4 hours and 40 minutes, peaking at 338 watts. 
This is incredible performance in my opinion, and there's still a good four hours of sunshine left in the day. Other than the washing machine, it is quite possible that I could offset my entire daily energy usage using this off-grid solar system and clean, renewable Colorado sunshine.